Good afternoon. Good evening. How is everybody doing? Good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is. Thank you for joining me. Oh, man, what, how, how was your guys' day been? Mine was good. It was, it was a good day. Got some snow last night, a little bit of moisture in the ground. Not as much moisture as we need, but we got a little moisture in the ground. Went to work this morning, didn't have a full day, but it was a good day, good day. Yesterday and the day before, I uh, put out a question out there, what you guys would like to talk about. Um, got, a, got a couple of Caught a couple of submissions there. Um, what what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a Christian. And this is the month of love. So what does love mean? And I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to tackle these things because man, what it means to be a Christian. That's that's a tough one. That's a tough one, especially to the non-believer. The non-believer that might think this is all a bunch of hocus pocus or might have been hurt by religion. Uh, I reach out, I sympathize to you that's been hurt by religion to know that this is not a place where uh, we're going out to hurt anybody or down anybody. This is this is a platform where we can we can just talk about it really really explore what it really means to be a Christian. I mean, I I can think of when I was growing up. When I was growing up in Peyton High School, elementary school and middle school, um, my grandmother was one of the most devout Christians I've ever known. Um, she was always in her Bible, could could quote scripture, um, just, just a very, very genuine heartfelt Christian woman and just loved everybody. But um, as I grew up, I wasn't really raised with... I can't say I wasn't raised with Christian values because I, you know, there was a lot of Christian values instilled in me, but I wasn't raised in the Bible. I wasn't raised in the church. Um, so when I seen people like that, it was really foreign to me. You know, those were the those were the kids that did no wrong. Those were the people that um, worked squares, if you will. Those were the kids that carried around Bibles and went to church. You know, five days out of the week, whatever. I know that's that's really stretching it a little bit, but that's what it looked like. Those were the kids who had the strange parents because they were just extra nice. They did everything different and I never I I envied that but I never never understood it never got into it I never bashed it but never got into it um so in my mind you know you had these bible thumpers as we all called them out there and it was it was strange it was it was just different it meant you couldn't cuss you couldn't party with your friends you couldn't bend the rules. You couldn't go out there and just be a rebel. So there was no fun, period. There was just wasn't fun. You got together with some other weird kids and you, and, and you prayed and you read your Bible. and you, It was just, that's what it was. That's what the picture was painted and laid out before me. Now, with that being said, did I ever dive into it that much? Um, a little bit, a little bit here and there. I remember going with friends or whoever it would be or girlfriends or whatever in high school and middle school going to their church and their and their youth group. And even then it was like these kids are strange. There is something different about these kids. And maybe it was that they were all just getting along and everybody was so friendly. And so loving, and and it was like I, I can't be a part of this. I don't I don't know, I don't know. Maybe that's what a lot of you younger younger guys and girls are thinking about. I don't know. Hit me up, hit me up, and let me know if that's maybe something you guys are thinking about. 
But as for us adults and older people, younger adults, what what does being a Christian mean to you? Does that mean that you live on a straight and arrowed path and you just do no wrong? Or does that mean that you admit that you're a sinner and you repent of those sins and you walk with Jesus every day and you just try to be more like Jesus Christ every day knowing that we will never be a hundred percent like Jesus Christ, but we admit that we have faults. We admit that we're sinners and we ask for his forgiveness. We and accept the, 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 just the love of Jesus Christ, just, just the blanket of love that he puts over us. Is that what it means to be a Christian? I don't know. I'm asking you guys. I am asking for me. Being a Christian means being bold, being brave, not one of those weirdos, not one of those people that other people look at it funny, but somebody who's brave and bold in their faith and not afraid to stick up for Jesus Christ, not afraid to let people know who I am and who I follow and where I'm going in life. That's me. That's, you know, and I could be totally wrong. I don't know. I'm not saying that's what everybody needs to do to be a Christian. But that's how I view it. Be bold in your faith. Bold, bold, bold. Don't question your faith or the word of God. And just be brave about it. I mean, come on. I hear so many stories and so many people just like, I don't know about that church. I don't know about church. I don't know about this Jesus thing. I don't know if I believe in it. Why not? Why not? When it's laid out on the table, there's two options. You can either follow Jesus which is not a hard test to pass, really. I mean, accept him as your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins. And follow him. Or keep on doing what you're doing and go to a place that there's called hell. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to hell. But I am saying those who do not follow Jesus Christ, accept him. I mean, that that doesn't sound like a fun place to go where there's for the eternal gnashing of teeth and and weeping and just a horrible, horrible, horrible place to be for the rest of your life. My pastor often says, you know, he's done funerals and things with, with gangs and bikers and guys say, you know, I'll... Once I get to hell, I'll see my friends and we'll party. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Gnashing of teeth and weeping, that's what's going to happen. But somehow there's a lot of people out there that refuse to accept Jesus Christ. I'm not saying you have to go out there and say, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Protestant. I'm a whatever more none of that i'm not saying to do none of that stuff just have a relationship with jesus christ accept him as your lord and savior repent of your sins a lot of you might be intimidated by this repent thing and you act like you're going to stand in front of a jury and they're going to beat you half to death because you admit that you have a problem with something and that you need help. And nobody's asking you to do that in front of a therapist, in front of your wife, in front of your friends, your brothers, your neighbor, nobody. They're, you need to get right with God. 
Whether it's in your garage, in the driveway, in your car, on the way to work, it's this, it's, it's that easy, folks. And then they're like, well, once I do that, then what? Love people? Love people. That's the other tricky thing. Well, what do you mean, Adam? I'm just going to go across the street and hug everybody and give everybody a high five and smile and wink and everybody everything's hunky-dory? Absolutely not. Because I promise you one thing, that once you repent of your sins, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and start following His ways, everything gets harder than what it is right now. Now, I know that's not a very good selling point. But everything will get more difficult. Because now the test begins. Are you tough? Yeah, I'm tough! I'm tough! I live on the eastern plains of Colorado. I work steers. I'm tough. You think so. You think so, but... I promise you... Following Jesus Christ will prepare you to be the toughest person that you've ever thought you could ever be. I promise you that. That's the ultimate test. And I don't know, maybe maybe some people just don't got it in them. I don't know. I, I pray that they do. I want them to. I want them to join this group of people. Like I said before, does that mean that you got to go around and say, I'm a Catholic or I'm a Protestant, or I'm a Baptist, or I'm a Lutheran, or I'm a Methodist, or I'm this or this or that. No, I love everybody that may be involved in those groups. All I'm saying is just form a relationship. And then go find you a church with like-minded Christians. Oh, there's that big word, Christians. And just... Explore these things. You go to the bar, you go to your buddy's house, and you kick back some cold ones and you talk about things, whether you agree with what those, those things are or not. You still do that religiously, or you go to your social groups or social media or anything and you debate things 24 7, and that's okay. But as soon as as you bring Jesus in into it, it then, oh, 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 there's the test. Are you tough enough? Are you bold enough? I don't know. All those things to me is what it means to be a Christian. Boldness. Boldness. No, they're... You open your Bible and from whence you probably put under your desk or put it away and there's tons of dust on it. You open it up and you don't understand what it says. Well, there's no longer an excuse for that because if you make it to where the thy, thou, this, thy, blah, 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 that doesn't make sense anymore. Well, that's no longer an excuse there, Bubba. There's a few different uh, versions of the Bible. Now, I say versions of the Bible. It's the same Bible. It's just some of them are made a little easier to read. I, I read out of the uh, NIV, the New International Version, or the ESV, English Standard Version. And each one of those gets easier and easier to read and to understand. And let me tell you, if you're, if you're used to watching movies... And reading books where there's all kinds of scandal, murder, scary stuff. The hero doesn't win. The hero wins. And the part where the guy that was the hero was punished to save the bad guy. Man, that's, uh, that's pretty crazy. Open up your Bible. You don't have to start at page one and read to the last page from Genesis to Revelation. Matter of fact, I don't encourage 
to start at Genesis or start in Revelation, but maybe start at somewhere like John or Matthew, the Corinthians, the New Testament. Read about the good news of Jesus Christ. And when you open that, I promise you, you're not going to think, wow, these guys are a bunch of fairy tale believing, puff the magic dragon thinking, fruity tooty, hoity toity Christian Bible thumpers. Matter of fact, after you do that, I guarantee the title Bible Thumper might be something you might want to proclaim proudly on your chest. I could be wrong, though, because most of the time, 99% of the time, I am wrong. And by no means, don't take any of my word. Explore this. Get into a church. Get in. I am not a theologian. I am not a preacher. I am not an, an educator. I am just a simple man going off of what I've experienced. All this is my experience, my testimony. I was just like everybody else on that fence going, I don't know about this. Other than my grandmother telling me that this God is somebody that helps you and protects you and does all of this. And then I find myself in my 30s driving a semi truck on my way to Hugo, Colorado going, God. Why have you forgotten about me? You help everybody else, but apparently you don't care about me. You don't care about me. Here's the funny thing. Here's that fairy tale part. A song comes on the radio on a regular mainstream station, a Christian song that's not on a Christian channel, comes on, and I'm like, what? My heart fills up. The Holy Spirit comes in me, kicks me in the butt. God kicks me in the teeth. So I've been here the whole time. I haven't forgot about you. Now that's a feeling. Now I'm not saying God spoke to me in an audible voice because he didn't and he doesn't. But there's a thing called the Holy Spirit that I do believe in that will come into you. Ring your bell every now and then. Now, with that being said, was it all hunky-dory and I went to church and everything is great since then? No. About a year into well, I'm going to say, I think it was about a year into it, maybe a little less. I find myself sleeping on a really thin mattress on an uncomfortable bed at a place called the Kit Carson County Jail. In a little town called Burlington, Colorado. Sitting in a jail cell. Well, it was more of a common area because some of you guys are really going to pick this apart and say, Oh, they don't have jail cells. In blah, 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 blah. I was in the common area, but either way, I was in a concrete room. Double stacked room with these little uncomfortable beds. And if any of you have been there, you know what I'm talking about. Eating meals off a brown a lunch tray. Thinking to myself, God, I what the heck? Thought I was doing good. What's going on? Hmm. Did he give up on me? No. No, he didn't. God was taking me through some things so that I could do things like this to where when everybody comes knocking at my door or hit me up on Messenger or whatever is through this saying, You're not a preacher! You're not a theologian! You don't need to do this. I never claimed to be, and I'm not a saint. I think that was jail stay number three for me in my life. I never went to prison. I'm not claiming to be a prisoner. And I'm not claiming to know what it's like to be a prisoner. 
But I know what it's like to go to jail. I know what it's like to mess up. I know what it's like to not have a good high school career. I know what it's like to be rejected. But yet, here I am. Proud to be a Bible thumper. Proud to call myself a Christian. And proud to have this platform to talk to you guys about it. So enough, you know, enough about this. Um, what does it mean to be a Christian? I mean, I want to hear from you guys. Hit me up. <clears throat> streetsmartchristian at gmail.com or go to my G or <laughs> go to my Street Smart Christian Facebook. Hit me up. We are now have an Instagram. We have a YouTube channel. Go on there and put put what you think about this. <clears throat> what it means to you to be a Christian. I had my Bible open the other day. I, I thought, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be <laughs> hey, I'll tell my wife. My wife is the most godly oh, woman I've ever met. God put her in my life because uh he was tired of me messing around, being an idiot. But um, she, ah, oh man. So I, I'm always trying to impress her, right? So I got my Bible open the other day. She's grading papers or doing whatever she's doing. You know, keep in mind she is about nine months pregnant now. So she is doing everything in her ability to be comfortable. But I got my Bible open and I'm like, I'm going to read Titus. I'm going to read the entire book of Titus. Now, keep this in mind, guys. I've been going to church and getting in Bible study since about 2017, June of 2017, and uh, I still don't have my old Bible figured out. Although I did know there was a book called Titus, and I'm going to read it. Little did I know that Titus is only, oh, I think three chapters long. Yeah, three chapters long. You can read it in 15 minutes. Or at least for me. I went to Peyton High School. 15 minutes for me. And so I read in Titus and I get down and I say, Babe, I read a whole book in the Bible. She said, Oh, good for you. Good for you. What you read? I said, Titus. She smirked at me. What was that? Four chapters? Come on! It was a whole book in the Bible. But... While we're on this, I read this the other day, so this is kind of a, it's a really good book to read about what it means to be a Christian, where Paul is telling Titus, he's gearing him up of, you know, this is, this is what you need to do. These are the rules. So I'm going to start at Titus 7. For an overseer, overseer as God's steward must be above reapproach. Reapproach. He must not be arrogant. Ooh, wow, that might touch a nerve. Can we all try to do that this week? Or quick-tempered. Hey, now we're now we're firing it up. Or a drunkard. Mmm, this might touch a nerve with some of my friends. Let's see if we can do this. Or violent. Mm, I hope none of you are violent, but you never know. Or greedy for gr Oh, sorry. Or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Stand bold in your faith, gentlemen, younger people. Ladies, let's stand bold in the faith that if anybody comes at us with whatever it is they got to say, we may be able to rebuke those who contradict it in a loving way. That doesn't mean that whoever comes at you about your faith you just get to knock them smooth out although that does sound like a good idea sometimes you need to do it with love let's go on down to 15 to the pure all things are pure 
But to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Nothing is pure. Those guys listen to Hocus Pocus. They're a bunch of weirdos. Nothing is pure. But both their minds and their consciences are defiled. Ooh. Ooh. Just like I talked about earlier. All these guys looked weird. Their parents looked weird. They looked weird. They got to buy. But what was my conscience doing? I want to be like those guys. Hmm. What do you say, tough guys? What do you say? They profess to know God, but they deny him in their words. There's another thing. Do you know God or do you just know about God? Because every single one of those guys, girls, young people that don't want to proclaim their Christianity or profess their faith. <sighs> yeah, I know about God, but you don't know God. Because if you did, you wouldn't be talking like that. They are destable, disobedient, unfit for any good work. There's a test, and there is a test for all you tough guys, tough girls, and young kids. Are you unfit for any good work? Let me see. That doesn't mean you just hold the door open for somebody and you're like, I'm a Christian. No. Let me see you pick up that cross. But as for you, teach with accords, with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded. Let's back up a little bit. Sober-minded. Now, does it say anywhere in that, do you can never have a drink? You can't crack a cold one ever? No. It just said don't have 15 of them. Is that so hard? Well, for some of you it might be. But, hey, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Judging, that's another podcast. That's another thing we'll get into later. Dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior. Not slanderers or slaves. Too much wine. Means you ladies can't just be getting... All tuned up either. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Man, I don't know. I don't know. This Christian thing, that sounds stupid. Well, this is my test to you guys. Let's see if you can do it. Let me see where the tough guys are. Now, 90% of you can be real. <laughs> I don't have to prove that I'm tough to AT. I'm not saying prove you're tough to me. Prove that you're tough to yourself. Let me see if you can do it. Because I guarantee there you have never, ever, ever done anything this tough. I promise you. Let me finish this out with Titus 3. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities. To be obedient. To be ready for every good work. To speak evil of no one. To avoid quarreling. To be gentle. And to show perfect courtesy towards all people. For we ourselves were not, were once, we ourselves were once foolish. We were all the same guys, tough guys. I was just like, yeah, come on. Disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and in envy. Hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of our God and Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of works. You can't hold the door open for somebody all the time and think you're getting to heaven, guys. No, do it or you'll get slapped. But I'm just saying, being a good person doesn't get you into heaven. Oh, I lost my place. Done by us renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to our hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy, and I want to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works 
These things are excellent and profitable for people. But avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, decisions, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful. He is self-condemned. Stay away from those guys. Stay away from them. Guys, I'm going to leave you with this. What does it mean to be a Christian? For me, it's to be bold in your faith. To study in God's word. Be in God's word all the time. And not just talk about it, but be about it. Let's be about it. Don't talk about it. Let's be about it. Will you be about it? I want to see it. Let me know how this was, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Hit me up, streetsmartchristian at gmail.com, streetsmartchristian on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. Let me know what you think. I love you guys. Let me give my shout-outs to Melanie McKnight Photography. Hit her up for all your photography needs. And also my good little buddy, Tanner for Tanner's Crafty Creations. For all your necklace, earring needs. Fellas, this guy can get you out of a jam. I know he can. Let's support these companies. Let's support these little guys with their hobbies. They're working hard. They're actually trying to put nose to grindstone. Make some money. Maybe buy a Dodge truck. I'm going to try to persuade him to do a Ford. Who knows? Love you guys. Let's end this in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for everybody who may be listening right now. I thank you for just the the opportunity to follow you, Father. The opportunity to try to walk like you more each and every day. I ask that you be with everybody as they go on their way with whatever they do this week. I ask that you be with everybody in school and in their job and in their day-to-day lives. Father, I ask that you open their minds and soften their hearts as they might have questions about you, Father, that might doubt you, that might not know how what it is to follow you. I ask that you just soften their hearts and sharpen their minds. It's just in your precious and powerful thing, I name that I pray these things. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in on another episode of Street Smart Christian. Later. <laughs>